Today, I'm going to share with you my top 10 fragrance oils that are perfect for blending. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Carrie. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, I'm going to share with you my top 10 fragrances that are perfect if you want to start to get into blending. Also in today's video, we're just going to blend some things together. I'll give you a couple of jumping off points and ideas to start with. So without further ado, do you know what I'm going to say? Grab your fragrance blotter strips and let's get into it. <laughs> All right, these are in no particular order because they all serve such a very different purpose when I'm blending, <clears throat> but they also have a ton of versatility. So I'm just gonna start, I pulled everything out. I have it here on the table. It's, it's, a, it's chaos down here, Tom. Um, I'm just gonna pull them as we go and talk you through why they're in my top 10. In no particular order, the first fragrance oil that I love to blend with because of its versatility is Cedarwood Blanc from Candle Science. Now you can get regular cedarwood, but what I like about this version from Candle Science, this is not sponsored by the way, you will notice a lot of these oils are from Candle Science. Um, what is great about this is it reminds me, it's sort of like an elevated luxurious um, fragrance that is similar to like perfume and cologne. That's why I love this one. And if you are not new here, you are, if you're part of the fam, you already know that that is my wheelhouse. That's where I like to play. Um, I just love those warm, perfumey, cologne -y types of scents. So this one is great because you can throw this into a floral scent or you can throw this into something that's maybe a little more androgynous or even masculine, and it's still going to be a great supporting character. Uh, it's it's just, it's that good, you guys. I think Cedarwood is in probably like 65% of my product line. <laughs> that is candles to body products, no joke. All right, the second fragrance oil that I absolutely love to blend is lavender. And this is also from Candle Science. I love this one because it is so very true to life. Um, with lavender, I can add this to something that maybe is leaning a little more gourmand and I can totally pull back those sweet notes because um, it's going to lean a little bit more floral. But I mean, I, I did a scent called Limoncello, which I absolutely love. It's super, super sweet. Um, it's a Limoncello cream, but I needed to knock it back and make it smell more like the drink. Um, I made that um, in honor of my uncle. He makes limoncello every year. Um, I come from an Italian family. So he makes limoncello and it's so delicious. I wanted to put that in a candle. And so <laughs> the limoncello cream has too much cream and sugar and sweetness. I just wanted to pull that back. So um, I did a triple blend of that one. Lavender is one of the fragrances that I added to that to really calm down the sweetness and make it more uh, like the Italian aperitif. Lavender is amazing, you guys. You can use it in anything from woody, musky, you know, mossy types of scents, or you can add it to fruit, florals. Like, it is just such a great powerhouse, and it's so unexpected. You only need a little bit, um, depending upon what you're, what you're going for, but I highly recommend lavender. All right, this third fragrance oil, Again, if you're part of the fam, should come as no surprise, but it is sandalwood. And I have this in a five pound jug just cause I use it that much. You guys, it is so stinking good. Sandalwood is very similar to cedarwood. Um, it's also similar to lavender in that you can add just a little bit, you can add a lot of it, you can add it to florals and fruits. Um, also more of those perfumey cologne scents. It is just such a strong, character to help add it also does add a little bit of sweetness but just a little little bit of earthiness maybe if you want to cut through something um that's just part of the fun with fragrance blending i absolutely adore fragrance blending is so much fun i think that's <laughs> i think that's what really spoke to me about the candle making process if you don't have sandalwood get yourself a sample and just start playing with it and you'd be surprised what it does it really does help elevate and enhance uh, an already existing fragrance or to add as like the third or fourth blender. All right, the fourth fragrance oil that I love to blend with is Mahogany Shea. Yeah, 
Is this a surprise? I'm curious. This is such a beautiful fragrance all by itself. You don't have to blend this one necessarily, but it just really comes to life when you start adding it to other things. This one, because it already has like coconut and shea, it also has sandalwood, cedarwood. It has some musk in here and it just makes it so wonderful. I think it blends best in with floral fragrances and some sort of muskier, earthier fragrances as well. It plays okay with fruit, though I haven't found anything that like I'm in love with. I just think it performs best in those um, in those areas, but do your own uh, fragrance blending and see, but Mahogany Shea for sure should be on your list. Okay, the fifth fragrance oil that I absolutely love to blend with. This probably is no surprise either. I feel like there is no surprises here, <laughs> maybe some, is uh, Vetiver, and this is also from Candle Science. I'm looking, they're all from Candle Science. It's just who it is. Vetiver is so good. <laughs> I feel like I can say that about a lot of fragrance oils, but the reason why this one is so great is because it already is like a little bit of citrus, a little bit of musky, um, that it plays well across the fragrance wheel. So if you wanted to put this into something fruity, this goes great with grapefruit and mangosteen. No joke, give it a try. Um, it's also just, again, these. it's such a great co-star to, or supporting actor to um, a lot of fragrances that you may already have. So you have something floral or fruity, like this is great with lavender. You know, you could put this with, you could put this with mahogany shea and lavender and it would be so good. So there's one idea. <laughs> All right, the sixth fragrance oil that I recommend uh, that you blend, this is also a five pound jug here, is Tonka and Oud. <sighs> mm, I love this so much. Now this one, I would definitely say, lives in the wheelhouse of like, musky and earthy and warm it, it, it plays very well there i think the best because the powderiness that's in here um is pretty strong like the the oud the powder it also has all the musks everyone's here to play um and i think it does best pairing if you're looking for an upscale like perfumey you know men's cologne or like that sort of like you know androgynous gender bend type of fragrance it does really well it smells so good on its own it's definitely more delicate and it leans more to the feminine side but the second you start blending this with a cedar wood a vetiver a sandalwood or something else um it's it's so good and that's why i have a five pound jug <laughs> all right y'all number seven we're gonna take a little bit of a turn here is Santal and Coconut. Oh, by the way, I got these pumps here. It was like a six pack on Amazon. I'll link them down below if you're looking for something that's easier to sort of pump your oils out of these five pound jugs or any five pound jug. This is such a beautiful, fresh, beachy, coconutty fragrance. It's also a little warm. It does have some musk in here. This plays well across the board. It plays well with like really like citrusy, bright fragrances, anything that's gonna have some lemon or lime, um, orange, verbena, anything like that. It plays well with peaches and grapefruits. The other thing about this fragrance that is super special is it can also be the star. This isn't just like a blender or a bridge fragrance. This is one that you can add a cedar, a vetiver, a sandalwood, you can add to this and it just really helps open up all of the other scents that are contained in this fragrance oil. It is so lovely. I actually am using this right now. It's the, the scent that I used for my homemade deodorant. I have a video if you're interested in how to make that, I'll put it right here. But um, I always add the fragrance that's sort of the mood. It's not necessarily like the season. It's like, what do I wanna smell like for the next couple months? Um, and this is what's in my homemade um, deodorant right now. And I absolutely love it because it feels so good. It smells so good. Um, it's always great to just change up, you know, the fragrance of your deodorant. But anyway, Santal and Coconut is one of my absolute faves. I think I've said that about every oil here, but they all have a special place in my heart. These are like my children and I've adopted them all and I love them all very, very much. I use them. We play a lot. 
I feel like this one might be a surprise. <laughs> Number eight is very vanilla. <laughs> I just want to say right off the bat, this one is very sweet. It's super, super, super sweet. But it's the most real vanilla that I have smelled that doesn't have sort of a fake, like artificial sweet vanilla, you know? Um, let me tell you about this. A little goes a long way. You don't need a lot of this, but you can add this obviously if you have, if you make a lot of gourmand fragrances, like this will play perfectly. But what I love about this is the unexpected sweetness and balance that it can bring to a fragrance oil like Fraser Fir, White Birch. If you're trying to do like a library fragrance and you have like some leather in there and some smokiness, add some vanilla. Wow. It's crazy. So this is definitely, I wouldn't put this in a candle. It will like attack your face, but because it's so sweet, but it's such a great blender and at very small doses. So, but you know, you could, you could get this or if you already have it and you've had it in a candle and you love it, branch out from it being the star and just start adding it and blending it into things. And it's going to surprise you. It surprised me. Wow. I can't believe we're already here at number nine. Sea minerals. Yeah. I, this isn't a, one of my favorites. I love you, I'm sorry, it's okay. Um, because it's not fragrances that I love. It's got a very like cotton, fresh, linen, ozonic profile to it. Um, I think it's more so the cotton and the linen for me. However, it plays beautifully as a blend. And I have clients that love this. Pete, of course, loves this. Um, it plays really well when it's blended and it sort of knocks back a bit of like that cottony, like linen fragrance that I, I think is like a little too much, but it, it's, it's really fantastic. And you can blend this across the board. This plays so nicely with like fresh florals, like white florals. It plays really well with like fruits, like citrus fruits. Sea Minerals is just one of those unexpected, you wouldn't know it till you smelled it type of blenders. It does do well on its own, but I much prefer to blend it in to something else, still at a larger percentage, like maybe it's a 60-40 or a 50-50, um, but it's, it's, really great and this was unexpected for me um but it's a great blender all right number 10 and just keeping with sort of that fresh clean chill vibe is a fragrance oil also in the five pound um called himalayan bamboo this is a very fresh spa like fragrance but it plays so well. Ooh, with Santal and Coconut, it does. It's amazing, those two together. Um, because it is such a fresh spa fragrance, I think it does best in other sort of fresh, light fragrances. Though, unexpectedly, you can pop that into Black Coral and Moss and it's it completely takes on a whole new life of its own. It's like, wait, who who's in here? Yeah, Himalayan Bamboo with Black Coral and Moss. All right, those are my top 10. However, I have to give an honorable mention to <laughs> the fragrance oil that I was just mentioning, which is Black Coral and Moss. Mm. Black Coral and Moss is so delicious. It's also another one of those fragrances that does smell sort of cologne right off the bat, um, but it's a great blender. And that Black Coral and Moss can also be the star with like another blend or another two blends in and maybe like a, a two parts to one part. Play, play, play. I have another honorable mention. I pulled it out here on my table. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get to it, but of course we have time. I'll get to it. Ooh, is Fireside. If you need to inject some like incense and smokiness to a candle or a product, Fireside is like your straight shot to, to get to where you want to go. It is so perfectly encapsulating if you were sitting around a fire, if you were toasting something, if you were in like a library or if you were in like a cigar, what are those places called where you smoke cigars? I don't know, I don't smoke them, but if you wanted to sort of bring that vibe, adding things to Fireside is, is solid. It's, 
I don't know how else to explain it because you know what you're getting. It's fiery, it's smoky, it's incense-y. You could also change everything you thought about it by throwing it into something like a cranberry Prosecco. Take my word for it. All right, my lucky number 13, final honorable mention, I promise. Um, I don't have the bottle because I'm out of it. That's how much I love to use it. And it's called Petrichor. You've heard me talk about it on my channel. I'll insert some video here of the Petrichor that I love to use from Candle Science. Petrichor is just perfectly earthy and mossy and damp and dank and like, ooh, you know, it has got a very particular job, but it is such a good blender. I use it in a lot of custom fragrances uh, that people want, especially for the ones that want like a real true earthy fragrance, Petrichor is going to help me deliver that. So whether I'm putting that with flowers or something fruity, if I want to capture a garden feel, Petrichor is going to take you over the finish line. So these are just a few of my favorite things. <laughs> I think it's apropos that we get into some fragrance blending. Let me show you how I do it. Um, we'll sort of walk through the process. I've received a ton of questions, tons of comments. Whenever I post my fragrance oil, first impressions, videos, and like putting things together, um, how do I fragrance blend? How do I know what percentage to start with? Do I always start with 50-50? Do I do, you know, how do you know what smells good? So we're going to dive into all of that. I'll have some answers to the most asked questions. And if you have more that I haven't covered here in this video, please leave your questions down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you or I will also film um, a follow-up video to this one. So let me know if that's a good plan for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blend with oils from my top 10, 13. And I'm just gonna sh walk through like how I get into it and what I do. So let me clear some space here. All right, we're gonna take a quick step back. Before you even get into fragrance blending, it's important to know how does that oil perform on its own. So anytime you get a new fragrance oil, I definitely would recommend putting it into a candle, whatever product that you make, so you can understand what it smells like, like in its truest form. I like to keep a database of just what my oils are, how they perform, what was the cold throw like, you know, what, what fragrance, like what notes can I pick up on? So that way when you get into the blending, you can really understand like, okay, this smells like this, but I know it's a little bit more nuanced uh, once it's put into a candle. So things like that. I just think it's important to have familiarity. I think that's where you'll have the most success with your fragrance blending. All right, step number two is just make sure you have fragrance blotter strips. Um, you definitely need these so you can play with percentages and blends, and we'll get into that here in a second, but you can get these from Amazon. You can also add them to your next um, candle supply order. All right, let's talk about the fragrance blotter strip really quickly. I like the ones with the lines because it allows me to just dip up into the line so that way I'm like just using like a little bit of this fragrance and then I'm gonna use more. Um, so basically, this is, and this is just how I do it. I'm sure there are many other ways to do it, but this is just how I taught myself and it works for me. <laughs> just wanna say that, there's no wrong way to do it. But if you want something that is going to help give you some data at the start, I would say the lines are super helpful. And if you get, like I have some that don't have lines on them, I just draw them myself. So like this doesn't have a line on it. I'll just take one that does have a line. And I'll just draw my own, like that. You know, I mean, it's not gonna be exact. We're just trying to go for like, does this ratio work? Do I need more of this other oil? So having done that, <laughs> So basically the way you wanna look at this fragrance blotter strip with the lines is, so if I dip it to just here, I'm just doing like 25%. And then if I want more of that fragrance, I'm gonna dip to the second line so it's gonna be more potent and I'm using 50% more of that blend. So look at it like this is 25 and this is 25. So that, that's 50%. So if I dip this into a fragrance oil, I have 50% of my 100% total. So now I'm gonna take the, um, the other fragrance blotter strip, and this is gonna go into a different scent, 
and I'm going to dip that up to here, so the second line. So that means I have a 50% of blend A and a 50% of blend B. So we're going to put those two together and we're going to fan it and you, we're going to say, okay, this is what I smell the most. This is what I don't smell too much of. I think three is too complicated to get into. I just think that to start, stick with two fragrance oils to blend. So now we've got 50-50. So I'm fanning, I'm smelling. You know what? A is too strong. It's overpowering B. You can grab another fragrance blotter strip and dip it into the B that's a little bit lighter and maybe do 25%. Do so now you have 50 and 25%. Grab a new fragrance blotter strip of oil A that was too potent and just put it up to the first line. So now you have 25%. So now we have 50 plus 25, that's 75% of B, and then we have 25% of A. Now, now smell that. How does that smell together? So for today's uh, example, like our show and tell, I'm going to blend black coral and moss with you today. Now, there is already sandalwood, um, sorry, no, there's cedarwood in here and lavender. So what we can do is let's grab some more lavender. Let's grab some cedar and maybe let's grab some sandalwood and let's see which ones we like blending with black coral and moss. All right, so when blending, after you've dipped, whether it's to the first or the second line, just bend your strip and then just let it sit on the table for like 30 seconds so it can dry down a little bit on the paper. Let's do some sandalwood, why not? <laughs> Actually, no, let's go to seaweed. All right, I'm gonna grab some seaweed, oh gosh. So you can take a look at the fragrance oil and take a look at the notes and say, okay, is there anything new I wanna bring in here or is it already pretty potent? Um, Okay, so I did cedar up to the first line. We have that, we're just gonna sit it down next to black coral. This is gonna be really fun. So now I'm gonna grab lavender. I'm just doing these at the 25% each, so that way we have room to see, okay, do we need to add more of one or the other? So I'm gonna just grab lavender, put it in. All right, black coral and moss, the top notes are marine, camphor, and pineapple. So interesting. The middle is lavender and bamboo, okay. The base is dark musk, vetiver, amber, and cedar. So a good, a, a good starting point is to say, okay, what's in the middle and what's in the base? Is there anything I wanna add more? So do I wanna add more pineapple to that? I don't think that's the vibe I wanna go to. But we already have the lavender, the sandalwood, the cedarwood. So I have lavender and cedar here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try cedar first. So I'm just gonna put them together. These are both at 25% and let's see where we're at. I mean, it's so interesting. This on its own plus the, oh God. Yeah, that's really good. I feel like so just based on this, I'd wanna do a 50-50 because this is already strong. This has its own strengths, but it's a little bit softer. So there is no science in like, how do you know where to start? You don't. It's really based on what you find here on the strip. So black coral moss is pretty strong and cedarwood is, it's bringing a nice softness there, but I don't want to soften it too much because then it could go in a, a, the wrong direction. Okay. It's so interesting. <laughs> so that's okay. Candidate one. Now let's try it with lavender. Okay, okay, so again, we're doing 25-25. Whoa, it re the lavender really softens up the black coral and moss. Oh, so the lavender is coming off really strong here. So if I were to do a 50-50, I would definitely want to have more black coral because the risk with this is you're bringing in too many floral notes and it could... It could just, again, it's all in your preference. There's no wrong way. Like for me, oh, oh man, okay. Yeah, I think the lavender is pretty strong. I'd probably do like a 20% of the lavender and an 80% of the black coral, <coughs> excuse me. Now, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to pull in the cedar. This is just for fun because we're doing it together. <laughs> Let's just see how they all smell. 
together. I mean, you can't go wrong. <sighs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so if I were to do a triple blend, again, I would keep the focus on black coral. I would do that at like a 60 and then I'd do 20, 20 of these. Though I am curious if we were just take a left here and add some sandalwood. This is so much fun, you guys. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. <laughs> I'm just gonna bend it. I'm just gonna let that hang out for a second. I think I just want, this is black coral. Mm. I think I just want something softer that isn't floral or, oh gosh, I think this is it right here. Let's see, let's see, let's see, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, yes, this, this is the sweetness and the softness that I want to add to black coral and moss. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so what I would do is I would do 80% this, 20%, 80% black coral. So what that means is because we only have 25% on here, we need to get to 80. So I need to find 55-ish percent more. So we're gonna take another, we're gonna put this up to 50. So that's gonna be 50. We're going to grab another strip. So we went up to two lines here. We're now going to grab another strip, right? Black coral. Because we need 20% more, it's okay if we go to the second line. It's just a little bit more. Again, this is just an approximation. We're just getting data here of like what smells good and how we want the blend. Technically, we have 75% black coral and we have 25% sandalwood just based on this and that may work too so now we have we have the three so we have two strips of black coral again one is fully dipped to the second line and one is just dipped to the um, to the first line then we have sandalwood which is only dipped to the first line so that's 25% and this is 75% which gives us a hundred percent but of course in your calculations if you still want to knock it down to 80 20 um, you just just put in that formula for um, your candle. <sighs> okay, that's nice. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I actually think I would keep the sandalwood at 25%. I'm gonna put it in the middle here. So when I'm fanning, I'm getting a good bit of them all together. <sighs> yeah. You could actually even go more on the sandalwood. But I think I would start at 75.25. Woo! Hello. Okay. <laughs> what I did is I blended black coral and moss mm -hmm. with sandalwood. I did a 25-35% blend. So smell black coral, so you know what it smells like. Wait, 25-35. 25, 25, sorry, 75 and 25. Mr. Man. I was gonna say, I'm doing lips. math all day. I'm like, that doesn't know, add up. I know, I know. But you're doing like trigonometry. <laughs> I'm doing basic math, which <laughs> even then is a little, <laughs> it's asking a lot. <laughs> what do you think? It's good, right? Yeah. Not my jam, but it's. All right, sandalwood. This is what we're gonna blend with it. Reset your nose. Yeah, I was gonna say. I taught him well, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so this, this is, is the blend. We're doing 75. Black coral and 25, um, if you want to go ahead and fan that, uh, sandalwood. I feel like I need to zoom out to get you. It's very sexy. It is very sexy. Yeah, it, it smells like uh, cologne. -y. Yeah. Well, black coral has a cologne skew to it. Mm. So the other thing that we were trying together was blending in cedar wood. That's what cedar smells like. Oh, it's interesting. This actually, so I was just drinking uh, Olipop and this smells like the root beer, kind of. Oh, like yeah. Like a little like, bit. There's like a little hint of that. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's got like a Barks root beery, like scent, but like in a sexy <laughs> way with the black coral. Yeah. Yeah. We're it's not like bad. if you made root beer sexy. I think it's the spiciness that you're getting from mm. the cedar wood that, you, that you're oh, yeah. equating to root beer now this is just an interesting really one like reset that. yeah i think i like that too but we went with the sandalwood because i really like that this is lavender 
another one of my top oh, I don't, like, blends. I don't know if you I try know. to smell this one. This one's yeah. just like, bah! Pete was playing with lavender a lot when he first started this company. I and did. Um, Okay, so you're going to blend it with black. And by playing with lavender, she means I smelled lavender <laughs> and was it. like, all right, it's going in. <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> it definitely sexes up the lavender. Like, it makes the lavender more interesting rather yeah. than just like Or is the, the lavender, lavender making the black coral moss more interesting? <laughs> no, I think it's the other one. I think it's the other way around. Because Fair this enough. is still lavender Fair. forward because yeah. it's so potent, at least to yeah. me. I don't yeah. know. So of the three blends, which do you prefer? Was it the cedar? I think it was the cedar okay. and the black coral. I think that was my favorite. So I think that's another version to try is to do 75 black coral and 25 cedar and also 75 black coral and 25 sandalwood. I don't think you can go wrong. And also with the lavender, I think the lavender, you wouldn't want to have too much of it. Maybe that's an 80-20. Of lavender Just, twenty. Yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. super potent. Yeah, yeah it's really potent. I was say, I, I was saying that too. I was like, oh, it's so potent. Well done. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. And for... thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Too, if you like this in a candle, black coral and moss with cedar wood would be a great room spray. Oh, just like adding like just some some warmth and sexiness to a room. I mean, if you're into it, this could be a great air freshener for your car. What do they call them, freshies? It's such a cute name. Yeah, I'm into it. I think that you don't have to limit yourself with candles. I think if you are open and you just get into all of your fragrance oils and just see where it takes you, especially as you have everything already on a fragrance strip, you can just start mixing and matching and that's where the real magic happens. I promise you, it's it's so much fun. I'm gonna put black coral to the side. I am going to grab lavender and I'm gonna grab some cedar. Those are so good too. These are really good. Ooh, little floral, little woodsy, little spicy. Mmm, okay, okay. I'm going to grab sandalwood and lavender just because we have them here, let's play some more. Because you never know, just sitting down and doing this just opens up new pathways to a different blend that maybe you didn't think about. I mean, you really just have to get in and play. I mean, that's great too. I think I like the cedar better. Oh, okay. And of course, the last, the thing we haven't done, cedarwood and sandalwood, or sorry. Sandalwood, cedarwood. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. I think this needs something to like prop it up, but it's 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 got short legs. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. I'm in. I'm into it. I'm into all of it. <laughs> so there's no way to really know until you start digging into the fragrances and looking to see what are those top, middle, and base notes and how can you play with those what is most complimentary to them. Yeah, as you can see, there's just, there's no starting point. You really just, you put up your own guide rails and figure out like, where do I wanna start? So I think the questions to ask yourself, uh, what is the end goal? Like what what is the candle that I want to create? What What is the emotion I want to evoke? What is the feeling I want to pull out from folks with this candle? And I think that's a great place to start then start grabbing oils and just start blending them. I think I must have went through like a couple of packages of fragrance blotter strips, just like, what does everything smell like, you know? I think this is this is a great demonstration of just how it's done in real time. Um, then making a candle and smelling it, it's like, what do you smell? Because we have very, Pete and I have very different senses of smell. So it's like, you can see, and you can probably have seen on this channel, things that I smell, maybe he doesn't smell. Um, it's just everyone's olfactory senses are very, very different. So your mileage will vary 
the best thing you can do is to just throw it into something and test it, honestly. Um, and for us, that's candles. It's so, so, so good. All right, I hope you found this video super helpful. I really just wanted to dig into my favorite blenders of oils and then just showing you in real time how to fragrance blend. Gosh, this was a great time for me. I hope it was for you. Let me know down below. <sighs> I'm losing my voice. Thank you so much for being here. Again, please comment and let me know down below. If you found this video helpful and if you have any other questions, I'm here. I want to be a resource for you and I'd love to answer your questions. So until the next one, I'll see you then. Bye.